Hi everyone, my name is Victoria Fernandez and welcome to my channel, I like to inspire mental health. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, I post weekly videos about mental health and my experience with bipolar disorder. In this week's video, I'm going to be this, doing the second part of last week's videos, which was ten, top 10 myths about mental illnesses, and this is just part two because I believe it's such an important topic and I feel like there's so many misconceptions about mental illnesses and that can have a negative impact on those, those of us who have one. Uh, so before we start, I do want to say that I make playlists for you guys to find my videos in a way easier way um, and that is through videos that are about bipolar disorders, some about anxiety or even my experience with Google. Um, so you can check that out in the playlist button. The first myth that I'll talk about is the fact that people think that Therapy does not work to help lower the symptoms of a mental illness. That maybe you should just take your pills and that's good enough. Well, that's simply not true. To actually have a really successful treatment for your mental illness, it is so important to have therapy alongside your psychiatrist, your medications that you might need. Both of us together are like magic. And they're the things that are going to make you feel the most normal or are going to let you live the life that you want to live. And I mean, I think that a lot of people think, oh, like, I'll just take the medications or, and it's fine. Um, and in general, I think people believe that therapy is not worthwhile. Um, but to treat a mental illness, it really is. I can tell you all from my own experience that I, therapy has transformed me. Yes, medication has completely changed my life because it has stabled me out. It has lowered my OCD thoughts. But without therapy, I wouldn't know how to find out like whenever I'm about to have an episode or how to deal with them and how to be emotionally prepared for everything that comes into my head sometimes. So with therapy, I deal with like the mechanisms, like how, how do I cope? How do I deal with things? And I have a lot of internal work. I, with therapy, I get, I get to see, you know, what makes me anxious? What triggers my symptoms? Because yes, the medication might help a little bit or it does help, but it doesn't do everything a lot of the work you have to do it yourself that's how that's how you'll get better so that's very important for myth number two i want to bring in a comment that i got last week on my spanish video and it is by noelia vera and she basically says that people make fun of her for the rituals she makes um, due to her ocd and basically tying along with the myth is basically that people think that those of us with mental illnesses can just snap out of it that it's all you know like something that we can control and although with therapy and a lot of work you can learn to manage it you can't just snap out of it like that it's not that easy like I can't just control my brain tell them don't think that I have to learn to ignore the compulsive thoughts or not give them importance but they're still there and so it's so important to not make fun of people to not make them feel crazy or whatever because of something they can't control i am telling you it's so hard to have those thoughts and it makes it even harder when people around us aren't supportive and are just making fun of the things that our mind tells us to do um and you know that goes with anything like if somebody's feeling depressed oh like just get over it you know just snap out of that and no i, I like you cannot force something that's just chemically and unbalanced to, to work like that, you know, that needs help and it's special care. And if people understood that, then so many more individuals would be able to get help. And, you know, they'd feel better. Um, they'd feel better overall because they would feel like they're not being judged, which is, you know, something that a lot of people feel because of having a mental illness. So, you know, if you know somebody who does something repeatedly or has compulsive thoughts or it's depressed don't tell them to snap out of it because they can't because it's not something we're making up it's something that's up here and it's something that messes with us and it's not like we want to be doing this thing it's like i don't want to have compulsive thoughts all day of course i don't it's disturbing it's annoying but it's something that happens and i can learn to manage it but i can't snap out of it so you know, be careful the words that you use with people because it can really impact them. For myth three, it's actually something that I've talked about in previous videos, but that was a long time ago. And it's basically that people think that, you know, being bipolar, having bipolar disorder, I don't like the word being bipolar, but having bipolar disorder or having OCD is just as simple as with a bipolar, 
happy, sad, happy, sad. And people tend to use it very lightly in their everyday lives. Like, oh, I feel so bipolar today, or that person's so bipolar. And bipolar disorder is a very serious mental illness that affects individuals around the world in so many ways, in different ways, but in so many terrible ways, whether that is depressive episodes or manic episodes or hypomanic episodes. It's not just happy, sad, or one day he was mad and one day she was happy, so then bipolar. No, it's not like that. It's so much more serious than that. And it's uh, having, before I, and I've talked about this before, before I had, or I knew I had a mental illness, I would use that word because it's something that we hear around all the time. Like, oh, this person's this or that, or I have OCD or I have that. But when you actually have it, it's a whole different perspective and it's important to educate other people on what they're actually saying um, it doesn't make them bad people but it's just it's important to educate others on the meaning of the words what is behind it and the fact that it could impact somebody more than they even understand when they use it in a in a wrong way uh, because it, it carries a lot of stigma with it and you know there's a whole lot of that so i'll make another video about that but the same thing goes with ocd i've heard so many people oh i'm ocd because i like to keep my room clean now to have a mental illness yes we can all have some type of traits you know some type of thing that bothers us maybe you don't like people chewing or whatever like all this kind of stuff but to actually be diagnosed with something it has to impair your life in some way now i'm not having all the details here but it has to be something that is obstructing your everyday living. It's impairing you in some way. So it is important to understand what you're saying when you're using those words. Because somebody who actually has it could be listening. And not just that, but it just creates the stigma. I mean, I've seen so many memes like, oh, bipolars or OCD or whatever it is, or even dyslexia. And it's like... It, it's bad whenever I see comments of people using them in a negative way to insult other people. That to me is like, wow, like this is what society thinks or whatever. Um, so that's, that's what it makes me think about. And I'm sure that that's what it makes other people think about that habit. And so it's important to understand what you're saying, because if not, you're spreading more stigma around and having a negative connotation towards these things. So it's really important to realize that. Myth number four is that people who have some type of mental illness cannot tolerate stress or, you know, daily work or whatever. So not true. Yes, sometimes we have to take some breaks. Sometimes life can be too much. But as I said in my first video, more people than you think have a mental illness. People who study with you, who work with you, who are your friends, and they're very successful, those people might some of them might have mental illnesses and you don't know about it and it is important to understand that sometimes yes like if I'm in too much stress then for example my compulsive thoughts come up but it doesn't mean that I cannot handle stress that doesn't mean that I have not found coping mechanisms for that and also that I've been able to find healthy ways to cope with stress and to be more productive it doesn't mean that I can't take it I can and it's okay if I can't some days but it doesn't mean that I can't at all. And, you know, stress is, I mean, stress isn't good for anybody at all. Too much stress, I guess, because you do need stress. But stress, too much stress is not good for anybody. But people with mental illnesses can and do have jobs. You know, they go to school, they get good grades. You would be surprised if you think that people who have mental illnesses are fragile. Because we're not. We're very strong people. We're very smart people. Um, and it's important to not put people who have a mental illness into a box. Don't limit us. Don't limit them because we can do so much. And I've always said this. I think that having a mental illness gives you your own superpowers, your own different way of thinking than other people. Um, so, I mean, we have our own hidden gifts and we should never be limited because we can do absolutely anything that we set our minds to. And I think that for anybody in this world, the limits are set by yourself like you on your own set your own limits because literally I've met the most incredible people who have gone so far in life and they have faced the most like the largest struggles in the world and so that gives me inspiration to understand that anything is possible despite whatever 
limit or disability we may have. Number five is one I kind of touched on on the first video, but it's basically that mental health issues don't affect me. And they affect everyone. Because even if you don't have a mental illness, you probably have a friend or know somebody who does. Therefore, it's important to educate yourself about mental health issues, about mental illnesses, because that way you can be a better friend to other people, better coworker, and you know, that is so important and we need more people to, to be there, just to listen, to understand what is a panic attack or to understand if somebody's acting in a certain way that's not, I guess, normal for the situation, maybe they're going through something. Instead of judging them, maybe we could help them instead. So it's important to, to really understand that. So for myth number six is that children do not have mental illnesses or cannot get mental illnesses. And that cannot be more wrong. So many kids that I went to school with, including myself, have suffered from a mental illness from a young age. And a lot of times those things are seen as disruptive behavior and they're not actually disruptive behavior. There's a kid going through something that they can't control. So this myth is so bad because it eliminates any possibility that a kid could actually just be going through something and needing the help. And it, it takes away the chance of that kid having a better life, you know? So it's really important to understand that I've talked about my own experiences as a kid. I talked about my compulsive thoughts as a kid and like how that came along further along in my life. Um, and it just, I was tormented. I was different. I was bullied sometimes because of the way that I was. And I didn't know what it was until I, I became older. And so it's definitely possible. And as parents, it's important to... Uh, always be watching for your kid for different signs. Is there something wrong? Is there something happening at school that's, you know, that's not happening to other kids? And then the faster that a kid can get help and therapy, the better because they can have a better life. They can do better at school and so many more things. And lastly, myth number seven is that people with mental illnesses cannot be happy and successful. A lot of people think that if you have a mental illness, you're doomed for life. That you're not gonna get anywhere. That you're paralyzed. So not true at all. You can be happy. And I also think that this goes for the people who are, have just been diagnosed with a mental illness or have, you know, are still struggling to find the right medication or the right treatment and are struggling to think that they can actually, you know, have, have a happy life, you know, purposeful life. and. It is possible. You have to find the right kind of help, of course, but it's possible to be happy. It's possible to accomplish all your dreams. There's so many people in the world who have done it. And I personally can say that I went through a lot of stuff um, back in high school and my first years of college. And sometimes, especially at the beginning, I felt hopeless. I would have never imagined to be where I am today, but it is definitely possible. And it is possible to be happy even while still having symptoms. I guess what I'm trying to say is I am medicated, yes, and my bipolar is under control. My OCD still affects me, but I'm still happy. I've learned to cope with it, and that's with therapy as I talked about before. And when and I understand myself every day a little more and more. I don't let these thoughts in my head ruin my life. I know they're a part of me, sometimes they can bother me, but I don't make them my whole life. That's why I never say I'm bipolar, I never say I like I am my OCD because I am not those things. Those things are a part of my life, but they are not me and I will not let those things rule the things that I can or cannot do. So when you have that type of mindset, you really open so many doors for yourself. And so many doors, you know, opportunities, whether at school, at work, but even in life in general, to happiness, to feeling good, and to inspiring others. So as I said on my last video, I came up with this list of uh, myths through NAMI, through mental health at Gub, and super cuidadores. So 
I hope you guys really like this video and I hope you guys share it and let me know what other things you think people have you know, a misconception of when it comes to mental illnesses, things that you face yourself or things that you used to think. Um, I would really love to know that. And I would also love if you guys could share this video, comment, subscribe, and always remember that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that bad day does not mean a bad life.